Hello, fellow students. This is Dr. Brenzi here. This is lesson 5.2.4. And we're going to be talking about an interesting topic today called torque. Probably a term you've heard of in the past and common use, especially for those of you who work at a tire store. We're going to define what torque is in physics. And, well, when we get to class, we're going to actually use torque to actually balance a person off the edge of a table. Ooh, it sounds scary. Well, let's get started then. I want to take you back to Newton's second law, back in Unit 2, and when we calculated Newton's second law, or learned about Newton's second law, we learned that force equals mass times acceleration. Actually, that should be net force. I forgot to put net in there. Net force equals mass times acceleration. Well, the question is, we've is there a form of Newton's second law for circular motion? Certainly, we've learned that there is a version of mass, which we call moment of inertia. There's a version of acceleration around a circle. We called that angular acceleration. Well, is there something that is the circular version of this that would allow us to write Newton's second law for circular motion? And the answer is a resounding yes, absolutely. Well, what is the circular version of net force? Well, the answer is torque. Let's define what torque is. Well, to do that, let's think of a bolt that is really, really stuck on something that we're trying to loosen, this bolt, and so what we do is we get our wrench out, and we're thinking that it's going to be pretty easy to take off, so we would apply a force right here at this point. We'd put our hand right here, and we'd push in this direction to try to get this to start to rotate, to loosen up, and lo and behold, we push with all our might, and this thing doesn't move. Well, what would you do? Well, if you've already pushed as hard as you can, what you probably figured out from personal experience is that you'd probably want to go way out here to the end of the handle and push again in this direction, and hopefully you have enough force at this point to start to rotate this bolt in the counterclockwise direction. Well, torque is a measure or, yeah, it's the measure of a force's ability to change an object's rotational motion. So this force applied here, when we put our hand here and tried to loosen this nut so that it, or loosen this bolt so it would start to turn, we were unable to do that. We did not have enough ability to change our bolt's rotational motion. But if we go to the end of the handle and apply our force there, well, our force now has enough ability to change the rotational motion of this bolt and it will start to experience angular acceleration. Well, what does torque depend on? Certainly torque depends on the force's magnitude, so the amount of force that you push on a wrench with. That's certainly true. What else does it depend on? Well, it also depends on the force's direction. I'm not going to talk about that until my next slide, but I want to put that on there because it is true. Well, the third thing that torque depends on, it depends on where the force is applied along our radius, the radius of our circle. Oops. Whoa. Hey. Sorry about that. Zipped to have too far ahead here. There we go. Okay. So, torque depends on how hard we push, 
the magnitude of this vector, this force vector. It depends on the direction, which I will get to in the next slide. And it depends on where the force is applied, because if we had the same force applied here, that would not have as much ability to change the bolt's rotational motion as if I applied that same force way out here. So you can imagine the larger the radius, the greater the torque, the greater the ability to change rotational motion. Now this is a very important point about torque because we can't just say it's force and it's about radius. We also have to say it's also about direction because only the component of a force perpendicular to the radius of the circle and the axis of rotation of the circle causes a torque. Now you're just to give us an idea, our axis of rotation would actually be something that points out of the screen. So you could imagine that the axis of rotation is actually pointing at you. And the way that we signify that on a piece of paper is we actually put a circle with a dot inside of it. And that indicates, actually I'll put it actually on the where the axis of rotation is. So what that indicates, it's like an arrow that's pointing at you. Okay. So you can imagine that axis of rotation coming out of the page. The, at, um, the force also has to be perpendicular to the radius of our circle. So I've drawn a long radius over here on the left. So if we have a force that we would exert in this direction, or if we had a force that we exert in this direction, as long as it's perpendicular to the radius, and it's also perpendicular to our axis of rotation, then you can say that these forces would produce torque. On the other hand, if we decided to pull along the radius at point A, or to push along the radius, and it doesn't matter if it's at point A or point B, if we decide to pull or push along the radius, that force is not going to cause rotational motion. So that force, these forces would result in no torque. Now, we sometimes have forces in between perpendicular and parallel to the radius. So let's say that we have a force that goes in this direction. Let's label it F. Well, we can say that that force is at an angle theta away from our radius, R. And when that's true, the torque, we call that tau, the Greek letter tau. And by the way, beforehand I used tau to represent period, the period of circular motion. Now from now on we're actually going to use capital T for period from now on. I'm really sorry about having to redefine that, but let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to use tau for torque from now on. So tau torque is equal to the radius where the force is applied, so how far away from the center the force is applied, times the magnitude of the force itself. Then we have to multiply both of those times sine theta. So torque equals radius times force times sine theta. Now, if I were to break down this force into its perpendicular component and its parallel component, well, it would turn out that the perpendicular component and Let's put our angle theta in there. I drew this triangle right here, and 
Hopefully you can convince yourself that since these are alternate interior angles, we can call that theta. So, now that I can show you that that's theta, well, what is this component right here? It is force times sine of theta because sine is opposite. So this component, the perpendicular component, would be F sine theta. Well, this is the perpendicular component of the force, and that's the component that produces the torque, so it is R times whatever our perpendicular component is. If our force is perpendicular to the radius, then we would just have torque is equal to R times F. What are the units of torque? Well, the units of torque in physics, in uh, MKS units, well, radius is meters and force is newtons. So it would look like, well, meters times newtons. But usually we put the newtons first. So actually we call them newton meters. Okay. So the units we give to torque are newton meters. Now those of you who have been working at tire stores or know something about torque. Well, in um, in what we call empirical units, because it's they were units given to us by the British Empire, so we call them empirical units, it turns out that the units of force are pounds, and it turns out that the units of distance, radius, are feet. So in empirical units, well, they actually, in empirical units, we put the feet first. <laughs> so we call this foot-pounds. So you may have heard, those of you working at the tire store, that you have to put so many foot-pounds of torque on your bolts or on your lug nuts when you tighten them up. Well, that's exactly what you're doing. You are applying a certain amount of torque to those lug nuts so that they won't uh, vibrate off your car when you're driving them down the road. But, in physics class, we're going to use Newton meters, okay? So these two formulas right up here, very, very important, especially this one, okay? Just remembering that theta is the angle between the force and the radius, and if they're perpendicular, then, of course, sine theta is 1, since sine of 90 degrees is 1, and it just becomes... R times F. So, to wrap this up, let's go back to Newton's second law. So for linear motion, we have F net equals MA. That's Newton's second law. In circular motion, we have tau net. So tau is the circular analogy to... So tau is the circular analogy to force or torque is the, is the analogy to force. Well, mass, mass becomes what in circular motion? It becomes moment of inertia. So that would be capital I. And then acceleration becomes alpha. So Newton's second law in circular motion is tau net equals I times alpha. I wonder if I had this written down already. I did. Ooh. That's going to look crazy. Oops. Do, do, do. Sorry. Forgot I had that written down already. Now, I want to make one more comment about this talonet before I finish here. So, let's say that we have a... This is a representation of our wrench. I don't have the picture of the wrench. But this is our radius... This is our axis of rotation right here, so we're trying to turn this thing around this way or around this way. Now, torques can be forces in opposite directions, and they can be in different places. So, I could have two different forces along two different places, and both of these I would have to add up for my net. Just because it's applied in a different place along the radius doesn't mean that I don't add it up. 
So I would have to add up R1 times F1 and R2 times F2. So the torque produced by this force is R2 times F2. And I am going to say that this is a positive torque. And I'll get to that in a moment why that's going to be positive. This one, on the other hand, because it's going, it would produce rotational motion in the opposite direction, is going to be negative R1 times F1. Now, why did I call this one positive? Because in math and in physics, we start off with our x-axis on a coordinate plane, and if we want to draw a positive angle, we would go counterclockwise from that axis. So this would be a positive angle of theta. If we went the other way on the other end, if we went clockwise, so if we started here and then moved down here, that actually would be a negative angle theta. So counterclockwise, we're going to say, is positive. That is a positive angle. That's a positive torque. Clockwise is negative. So that will be a negative angle or a negative torque. So if you remember which way angles are positive in math class, you'll also remember which way angles and torques are positive in physics. Great. Well, that's the end of our torque video. We're going to do some examples tomorrow and then... I'm going to see if we really can balance somebody on a, on a board off the edge of a table. Ooh, sounds exciting. I look forward to showing that to you tomorrow. All right, take care. Bye.